From the pages of MikeHuckabee.com, a source of reason, sanity, and levity in very trying times. And it's also where you can find my comments beamed to your email inbox twice a day. And it's always absolutely free. Let's take another look back at the stories that made up the week that was. First up, the problem with trying to build a mass political movement on fringe groups that demand everyone agree with them 100% is that sooner or later, the members of your coalition will start turning on each other. Case in point, Fairfax, Virginia, a group of LGBTQIAPK plus whatever, it's getting longer than an eye chart. All of these activists are condemning an otherwise solidly leftist school board member because she politely said that she couldn't 100% endorse their agenda because of her Muslim faith. Now a full, the left eats its own frenzy is afoot, complete with angry demands for the requisite groveling apology. This may be how the leftist movement will ultimately be stopped, not with a civil war, but just by their own incivility and their utter intolerance of anyone who won't tolerate every single little thing they demand. We can only hope. On to the Twitterverse, where Joe Biden's town hall got more attention than it did where it actually aired on CNN. And I think this might be the last time Joe's handlers are ever going to let him do one of these again. Redstate.com described the event as brain melting. Believe me, they didn't say that because the content was too intelligent to understand. It's because it was too unintelligible. See if you can make heads or tails of his statement, which was supposed to be about kids wearing masks or, well, or something. You're always straight up about what you're doing. And the question is whether or not we should be in a position where you uh, um, are, why can't the, the, the experts say, we know that this virus is, in fact, uh, um, uh, is, 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 it's going to be, uh, or excuse me, we, we, we know why all the drugs approved are not temporarily approved, but permanently approved. Yeah. That's underway, too. I expect that to occur quickly. It's as if he took all the thoughts in his head, threw them into a blender without the lid on, and that's what came out. I mean, even Don Lemon was confused, but it didn't end there. President Biden, in fact, said something that would have made the so-called news media go supernova if President Trump had said it and would have gotten him flagged by social media platforms for misinformation. The, the, the various shots that people are getting now cover that. They're, they're, you're OK. You're not going to you're not going to get COVID if you have these vaccinations. Yeah. Twitter user Jewish Deplorable added, quote, Biden says this as fully vaccinated White House staff are testing positive for COVID, end quote. And remember, that happened after virtually, virtue signaling runaway Texas Democrat super spreaders infected them. Well, next up, my tweet on Congressman Eric Swalwell of California after it was reported that Swalwell had apparently spent thousands of campaign dollars on booze and limo services. I said... Maybe the reason Swalwell dallied with Fang Fang and made up nonsense about Russia was he sauced? Fang Fang, of course, was unavailable for comment since she fled the U.S. in 2015 when the FBI figured out that she's probably a Chinese spy. Swalwell, perhaps, has been drowning his sorrows ever since. Well, some more from the Twitterverse as Amazon CEO and oligarch Jeff Bezos blasted off into space this week on his Blue Origin rocket. Former Congressman Tulsi Gabbard tweeted, the only problem I have is that it's going to come back. <laughs> but come back it did. And Bezos took some heat for this remark, thanking his employees and customers for funding his playtime in space. I also I want to thank uh, every Amazon employee and every Amazon customer because you guys paid for all of this. <laughs> so seriously, for every Amazon customer out there and every Amazon employee, thank you from the bottom of my heart very much. From the bottom of his heart and his bottomless bank account. Well, time for this week's shame on you. How about Speaker Nancy Pelosi? blocking two Republicans from the commission to investigate the January 6th riot at the Capitol. Jim Jordan and Jim Banks, both of them iced out. 
Here's what Pelosi said about them on Thursday. I quote, these people are going to act up, cause a problem. And people said, put them on. And then when they act up, you can take them off. And I said, why should we waste time on something as predictable? Speaker Pelosi, Congress may resemble a nursery school at times, but claiming the other side will act up? Really? Why don't we roll back some tape to 2016 when Democrat Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib was ejected from a Trump rally for this little tantrum? You guys are crazy! You're an animal! Get a job! I don't recall Jim Jordan or Jim Banks ever doing anything like that. Hmm. First term Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib now sits on the House Oversight Committee, and Nancy Pelosi put her there. Finally, now some fresh air from the great state of New Mexico. As Hollywood has evidently turned into commiewood, Fox Business reports that New Mexico has taken in more than $600 million in 2021 alone. That's during the pandemic, thanks to New Mexico's tax incentive. Major production companies like NBC Universal and Netflix have built studios there. And Netflix has committed to spending another $2 billion over the next decade. Hollywood bringing a lot of money to New Mexico. Let's just hope they don't bring their politics there too. Well, until next time, these have been the facts of the matter. Now, if you're seeing this, I know you've enjoyed that video. I mean, how could you not after all? So you know what you should do? Leave a like, click on the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell next to it so you'll always know when I have another video up for you to enjoy.